Now, the boilers was over in here. There's 14 of them. Then right along the side there, out this way. There's a stairway that went up in the engine room. How many times you come through these doors? Oh, boy. <laughs> many, many times. Now, this whistle, I was telling you, the last one I'm, that was ever blown, it, uh, it, you, if you had as much as 150 pounds of steam on, I threw light, I couldn't, I couldn't pull it down, couldn't break it, couldn't break the steam. And I had me a steel bar about that long, and I put it on the chain, and it was 50 feet up to the whistle. And I had a big, long, what they call a cross hall chain. They're small. It was on that whistle, and I put that thing down there up about this high. And I'd go to blow the whistle, I'd back home, take a run and jump, you know, and put my way on that's the only way I could blow it. <laughs> Whereabouts would that have been in there? It's in a cubicle on top. There's a, it was a, it was an air space is what it was. It ran right along the top, you know, and it had, it was, the roof was like this, like a house roof. What was it like working at the mills? Oh, it was it was fine. I don't, you know, I don't intend to brag, but I never, I didn't usually have a hard job. My job was all, and I did an awful lot of the, of the work for the company that liked the grain door factory. Now they. Uh, you see, I, I was, I, that was piece work. I got five cents a door on board car, and I paid two cents a door to have them made. At that time, you know, wages wasn't very much, but I was making $12 a day. <laughs> For that time, that was a lot of money. <laughs> well, of course, they went broke, why? That, that bursted that bubble. But then, then it laid, it lay in litigation for two years. There was, well, it wasn't hardly any of the people left. There's a lot of them stayed here. And, uh, I was put on guard, day guard. There was two night guard. But I was the only one in daytime. And I carried a clock. And there's a 12 miles around it. And I had to make that about uh, 12 times a day. There was 12 miles around the mill? 12 miles. I mean, it was a mile around, and but I had to make 12 trips a day around it. And if you got there just a, oh, 10 seconds before it's time for, the, for it to wind, well, you just had to sit there and wait for that 10 seconds. And then the kid would go right in. That punched the time you were there. And so on. If you got that 10 minutes, why? Well, sometimes I'd sit down on the lumber pile and play the French harp a while. <laughs> Waiting for the time to. I carried a harmonica. I'd play that. Point the time to get to that call. Did many people? Did many people save money? Did oh, the some of the you take the head soldiers and the bosses and, and the electrician and people like that and like this. I drew. I drew four dollars a day. Well, that while I was in here, but. Uh, the common labor. Now, when World War came on, they was only paying two dollars a day for ten hours. But when the World War came on, it finally inched up to three and a half. Oh boy, they're all getting rich. Then. <laughs> did anybody have? Did many people have money left when the mills sought out them? Oh, 
They didn't have a lot. They some of them didn't. You might say, you was, they were some of them back before this time now, especially around Winona or Fishertown. They had three or four families in town that were real poor and had a large family. They'd work all day, go back to the office and draw one dollar coupon. Draw a one dollar coupon Excuse to me buy grocery. Uh, get a slight move. There's something wrong with the What was Big Town? Uh, Fisher Town? No, you said something about Big Town up here on the hill. Oh. I don't know. I may be going to have trouble listening. Did, uh, did the bosses separate themselves from the men? Well, no. No, they, they were, they didn't do that. Of course, there's a, there was a certain element that they, they never, we mistreated them or anything like that. They're always friendly with them. But they didn't, what we call hobnob with them, you know. They, they had a very lowly job and, were poor. They had most of them had pretty good sized family, and but the uh, the ones that I was telling you about, they all lived back there, and part of them had their own plumbing in their home. Did many of the people who were from this area have those good jobs, or were they all outsiders? No, no, they. They were all that part of them come with with the old Missouri Lumber and Mining Company. Part of them come. I know both head sawyers did. They brought quite a lot of people from uh, when they sold out at Grandin. They brought quite a lot of their hands with them, and the rest of them. Sometimes you know, some farmer out here he get his crops all in. Why he come work in the winter? Did, uh, any, did people in this area fight the mills coming, or did they think it was good? Did the people who lived here want the mills to come? Oh yes, yes, they wanted the mills to come. Yes, they did. You see, they had uh, they had 35 miles of logging road, and they had 14 miles to the uh, junction. It's 14 miles from here. To the current river banks of the Pisco, and they went from here to there, and then went down current river railroad to uh, Hunter, or not Hunter, but well, they went through Hunter, then Williamsville. That the Halk Road now kind of run down from that other big mill. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name Bunker. That was a big mill too, but it was way back up further, and they had the railroad that it ran down into the what was known then as the Cotton Belt or the Iron Mountain, the Iron Mountain Railroad. Well, the, these, this here from here, why well, they had a contract to, to carry the mail. Why did people want the mills here? Oh, they wanted to come because of the, of the money it brought into the to the country. This, there's not very many big farms down in this country. Not very many. There's one down here that is called the Element Place, and another one, two of them up the river, about four or five miles. There are wonderful big bottom farms. And there's one right just below the bridge there at Eminent, uh, the old Johnny Wells place. Now that's about the only big farms that was in there. There's, there's lots of little patch farms, hill farms. But didn't people, people really didn't need money before. I mean, it was kind of a subsistence economy. Well, <laughs> so, I guess some of them made it but making a little bit of white new and they raised quite a lot of, uh, of this is the greatest sweet potato country i ever seen i never seen anything like it you see this is all this is all uh clay it's that is it, these bottoms are clay 
and the most of the hills. Now, what it is what they were called, but it's real red. You could make brick out of it, some of it. Some of it had a little too much sand. But you take all in here, the, where the ball ground was at and where the, a lot of the lumberyard was at, why, 